you'll see a lot of the old identities uh, here. I think that was uh, that was uh, Bruce Jones with the belt of medals, with uh, I think uh, Dick Borchers alongside him, and of course uh, Arthur Pittman. I'm sure bringing up the tale of the field, and um, I think uh, our Glad would be the one that would know. Um, uh, the names of almost uh, all of the uh, old-timers here. And there's our scoreboard, and if you look closely, you'll see a lot of the, some of the old names. Uh, I'm sure I can't remember them all. However, there's um, uh, Don Sire, just in the background, just turned his head there. Here's my son with a 3025 just gone past. Um, let me see now. Uh, this uh, chap's uh, adjusting his front sight, and it's one of our uh, our um, markers. And uh, this is one of the black powder rifles being fired in the old uh, in the old um, the the, the um, uh, Handorf uh, Oval Range. Here, yeah, this is uh, this is me, Bill Hambly Clark Senior, uh, firing a three hundred uh, three three twenty five of my own design. And this is a, um, a high wall Winchester, and this is a um, an old Stevens target rifle, very old that one. They're worth their weight in diamonds today. This is Bruce Jones, uh, the um, the king of that uh, that you saw in the procession. Um, it was a bolt action rifle of his own uh, design, and this is Margaret Pym with a, a Martini action, uh, probably a, a triple two rimmed cartridge, and Margaret shot very well. Uh, all the ladies shot well for that matter. This young chap, I can't recollect his name, but again, glad would know that. They started to ah, oh, there's our glad now, <laughs> a very young our glad uh, at that. And we had a lot of prone shooters from visiting rifle clubs there over the years. In fact, uh, some of these chaps still alive have been shooting uh, at Handorf for the kingship and that at about uh, for about 60 years. Uh, there's, uh, there's Arthur tailing up the field, and let me see, uh, there's Bruce, I'm pretty sure that's Bruce Jones and Don Sire, Bruce wearing the belt of medals and Dick Borchers alongside him. Uh, looks like Fred Hall at the back, I don't think it may, it may, be, Dick, uh, it may be Fred Hall. Hmm? Greetings everybody, this is your HCTV reporter, Bill hamley Clark, bringing you a first-hand report on the 98th Kingship at Handorf Rifle Club Incorporated at Handorf, South Australia. It is the 27th day of December 1980. The history of this club goes back more than a century to the old black powder days when a shooter took a shot, then stood aside to reload his weapon, during which time other competitors took their turn until his turn came round again. So although only 15 shots are fired, including sighters, it may take a full day to complete a match. The method of shooting continues to the present day. In years past, it was the custom for the king from the previous year's shoot to parade with a band and a procession of shooters and friends up the main street of Handorf to the Handorf Oval, where the shoot took place. The king would wear the collar of medals in this procession. The collar, adorned with over 90 medals, is very picturesque and quite heavy. Each year, two medals, either gold or silver, may be struck, one for the king and one for the club. It was largely due to the efforts of the president, Mr. Red Turter, that the present range was obtained. It has been in use for only two kingships and already uh, f facilities are far superior to the old range. I have been shooting with the club for about 40 years and have twice been within one point of the coveted double possible. This perfect score was not shot during the first hundred years of the club's history. I now introduce you to the club president, Mr. Reg Hurt. How many do you think we're going to get up here today? That depends. Anything I should imagine from 60 to uh, plus. If I get 60, well, I'm still happy. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see 120. It's very, very difficult to cater for this sort of thing, isn't it? And um, and uh, I, I can see just by looking around that the new range leaves the old one for dead. And I bet you're a very, very proud fellow about that. It not only leaves the, the uh, facilities for dead, it also leaves the president for dead. He's just about had it. 
Believe you me. A lot of the older members, they're getting older and older. Uh, what is our oldest me shooting member now? Would be Ben Crum. And Ben would be... Well, he'd be 75 plus. I think he's a little more. I think he's just 10 years older than me and I'm going 68. So. <laughs> and oh. how, how, how many years have you been shooting with the club? Well, 1956 was the first kingship. 1956, so that's 24 years you've been shooting. Uh, my association with the club dates back, I think, around about 40 years. Yes, Bill, I think your name figures somewhere around about 1940. Uh, which, you know, if we take the cap <laughs> off and look at the grey hair and, uh, the, and the ball spot, uh, we'll say, no, I think you came in... Somewhere around about early 1940, Bill. Yes, it would be about that. Uh, nevertheless, Reg, uh, as you say, you've worked very, very hard and undoubtedly you've been a tower of strength and uh, there wouldn't be a range here without you, that's for sure. And, uh, and I think that when you do eventually retire as president, you'll have a, a monument uh, to yourself, something to be very, very proud of. Thank you very much, Reg. Now we'll get on with the shoot. Good. And uh, get stuck into it. And Roy's doing a good job down there. I reckon that's the best photo I've had of him all day. Here is the uh, range officer for the day, Mr. Bob Chelson. Good morning, Bob. I guess good you're going to see a big roll-up today, eh? Yes, it'll be a big roll-up. Yes. And um, uh, you've, you've been shooting with the club not very long. Not very long, only and a couple of years. Very successfully? Oh, uh, you know, up and down. <laughs> Well, Bob isn't shooting today, but he'll be in charge of festivities, so we'll take it from there. Thank you very much, Bob. Good. Thanks, Bill. And uh, Alan Elliott, who's the, one of the very, very important men today. Uh, Alan usually shoots here, and uh, have, you have shot a possible, have you not, uh, Alan? Yes, have, yes. yes, Alan's shot a possible, and he's, uh, as I say, a very important man. He's in charge of the grog. Good morning, Alan. How are you? <laughs> Oh, hello everybody. We're going to have a fine day today, I'm sure. I think it'll be a beautiful day. Thank you, Alan. Uh, you have got to push it down, mate. Right. right. Okay. All I've got to do is bounce. We've got to do is find it. I've given Bill a run down. Oh, she's Yes, we're on air. This is Terry Brown, a past vice president, secretary, and what have you. How long have you been associated with the club, Terry? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, oh, must be at least six years, seven years, I yeah. suppose. And, and you've taken part in the march from Handorf that, that we had in the old days? Yes, um, well, up until we uh, closed down, we had one every year. Uh, it's, um, uh, well, it's had to be going into, uh, into I think into the uh, records as being a thing of the past because obviously we're too far to march. That's it, yeah. because of the distance, you're quite so, right. So uh, we'll think of something else to take its place one day, perhaps. Sure. <laughs> and, and tell me, w w what is the highest score that you've shot? Uh, overall or uh, overall, overall uh, 155. Yeah, that's 155 out of 156, which is, uh, that's, uh, well, I've only done it twice anyway. <laughs> so that's a very good score. <laughs> well, we hope we can do it today. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you all the best. Thank you. I'm now going to try and interview Ben Crum. Ben has been shooting with the club for goodness me, Lord knows how long. He's, he's 78 now, but we'll see what we can do. Ah, uh, good morning, Ben. It's nice to see you here. Tell me, how long have you been shooting with the club? Away for quite a while. 
locked in a recess for quite some time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 from what years? How much have you attended then? Then? At, at right. least 15. Yeah. Ah, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. And, and what, uh, what would be the highest score that you've shot? 150. Well, it's 150 out of 156, which is not bad going. And so here's Ben, and you're 78 then? 77. 77. Well, you're only nine years older than me. That's not so, that's not so much, is it, really? Um, <laughs> that's a fair bit. <laughs> it is a fair bit at the end of your life. You're so right. right. Any, anyway, Ben, we all wish you very, very well here. And we hope you... What is your name? My name is Rudy Blenker. Ah, yes, Rudy. And tell me, how long have you been shooting with the Handorf Club? Oh, I come up here once every year since 73. Ah, yes. It's very, very different to what you're accustomed to at the Dean, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's different, but it's a good fun. Oh, it's good fun. Yeah, I enjoy it very, very much, I can assure you. And uh, uh, how successful have you been at the Kingships? Uh, the best I've done was 152. Well, 152 with a military-type rifle is pretty good going, and I wish you very, very well today. I will do my best. <laughs> That's all we need. Thank you. Now, we've got John Gorman from Interstate, and here's John, and uh, this is John's first occasion at Handoff, so we'll go and see what John thinks of it. Good morning, John. How do you like your Good first day, uh, your first try at, uh, at Handel? Yes, it's very interesting, Bill. Uh, as uh, I told you previously, I haven't been here before, but it looks uh, very interesting and similar to the many uh, international shoots that we've been to before. Ah, oh, you'll find it very different because here you fire one shot at a time, and then you step aside and make right way for the next man until your turn comes round again. In spite of that, uh, we uh, each competitor will fire a shot about once each eight or nine minutes, depending on how many are on a particular target. Well, that would certainly build up a bit of pressure, Bill, wouldn't it? It certainly does, especially in the later stages. But you'll see some very, very famous names here today. Anyway, John, I wish you all the best. Thanks, Bill, and much obliged. Now, I've managed to grab Tammy Lerman, one of the very, very old identities of, uh, of Handorf and the Dean Range, and anywhere they're shooting, we find Tammy. Good morning, Tammy. How are you this morning? Not bad, Bill. Bad <laughs> yourself. Oh, as you see me. Tell me, Tammy, how many years have you been shooting at Handorf? Oh, since the start off after the war. So, uh, since about, uh, what, 1946 or thereabouts? Yeah, 46, yes. Yeah, so 46, 56, 66. <laughs> Tammy's uh, also an old identity. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, my word. And, uh, and how high, what, what is your best score here? I tied for second, the second year up here. You know. Tied for second? Well, that's much better than I've done. <laughs> the best I ever did was about tenth. Kelly Costa was shooting that year. Yeah, yeah, I remember Kelly. And we fired shot for shot for seven or eight shots, probably. My until word. We decided. My word, that was exciting. Of course, the whiskey ran out that <laughs> Tammy is one of our very old identities, and he would be one of the best, uh, the best known faces around the shooting scene. Anyway, glad to see you, Tammy, and I hope you shoot well. Yeah, good to be here, Bill. Now we've got Bob Richards Mousley, and uh, Bob is a very, very famous shooter and actually has shot all over the world. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, and Bill. Happy to, happy to see you here. Nice to be and, here, and, yes. and you're all up with this special, special rifle that you got in America? This was the Palmer Match rifle, the one we shot the uh, centenary or bicentenary of America, the centenary of the Palmer Match, and right. I suppose... Hey, come on, chap. Hey, 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 hey. Stand back a bit, please. Uh, we, we got a little bit of an interruption there, but we'll come good. Uh, this, uh, this was a Palmer Match rifle, and uh, I had the opportunity of buying it, so I, uh, I brought it back home with me from and, America. And how successful well, have you been with this rifle? I reloaded some ammunition for last year. I got the lot in the first round, uh, and then I never hit the bullseye the second round, so uh, last year, but I hope to do a lot better this year. Bill. Oh, well, the tension yeah. gets very high here, doesn't it? Doesn't it? And uh, tell me, Bob, uh, how long, how many years have you been coming up to Handor for uh, the Kingships? I won the Kingship as a restricted in about uh, 67, and I think that was the first year I came here. So I've been coming up 13 years. Oh, well, that's quite a long time. You must know your way about, anyway. Yeah, so that was at the old range, <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, Bob is a regular competitor at the Dean Range and also uh, travels overseas to the, uh, to the um, uh, matches in America. Tell us a bit about that, Bob, the uh, matches in America. Well, the, the, the American range, uh, we, we shot at Camp Perry, and uh, absolutely magnificent. You'd never see a better range in, uh, in the world. Well, we're doing our best to make it right here. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was for a thousand yards. It was pure grass, flat as a board, and um, it would have been three quarters of a mile wide. 
Must have been very beautiful. Yard, 300 targets, yes. Thank you very much, Bob Richard Mousley. Thank you, Bob. You'll see many very famous uh, faces here today. Uh, for instance, I've got in my sight right now Yvonne Hill, who is an Olympic shooter and regularly attends at Handorf. Yvonne doesn't know that I'm zooming in on her, but uh, I'll, I'll get her for interview shortly. Uh, Yvonne is uh, uh, quite well known at Handorf and of course I suppose all over the world. She's been quite a con controversial shooter. Yvonne, I thought I'd grab you while I, while I could and uh, tell me, how many times have you shot at Handorf? About six, I think. <laughs> I'm not about sure. six times, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and where have you shot over the world? I know you're an all over the world shooter, but, uh, but I'd like to tell all the people about that. Um, I've shot in Mexico at the Benito Juarez, in Switzerland at the World Championships, in Moscow at the Olympic Games, in New Zealand at the Pacific Regionals, and that's all so far. <laughs> <laughs> as, as if that isn't enough. Anyway, we wish you all the best today, Yvonne, and uh, we'll be looking forward to uh, your successes, because I'm sure you'll be quite successful. Thank you very much. Get on. Now we have Sid Miller, and Sid has shot at the handoff for many years. How many years, Sid? Fifteen. About 15 years. And have you ever taken the kingship? No. <laughs> well, it's about time. Uh, Sid is one of the famous shooters of South Australia and shoots uh, re regularly with the Sporting Shooters Association at Benchrest. And But you've taken out state championships there, Sid, haven't you? Yes, I have, Bill. How many? Oh, oh, quite a lot, but not too good up here, though. <laughs> anyway, we wish you all the best today, Sid. Right. Thanks, Bill. This is a shot of the targets, and as you can see, there are four targets in operation today. I probably won't get an opportunity to show, that they show you them better uh, later on, so I thought I'd take the opportunity now, and uh, I'll zoom back so that you can see the whole range, which is quite picturesque and uh, uh, wooded setting, and uh, just the thing uh, on these long Sunday shoots that we have, like, for instance, the President's Cup. Now this is a view of the, uh, of the shooting positions and you can see the crowd is starting to arrive. I'll zoom in on there a little and give you a bit better look. It's difficult to get right in underneath the uh, shed, but we'll do the best we can. Ah, here's Tony Dallas and uh, when I got this on, uh, on um, uh, I've got to focus her in a bit, uh, Tony, you just hold that a moment. And uh, how long have you been shooting with the club? Oh, just over four years now, Bill. Yeah. And uh, what positions have you held? Uh, I was secretary of the club two years ago for a year. Uh -huh. And what is your highest score so far? Uh, I shot 154 birthday shoot this year. Well, that's only two off. That's only uh, that's 77, 77. That's oh, no <coughs> nothing wrong with that. If I could shoot that again today, I'd be very happy. Well, I reckon that if you can shoot that today, you'll be right up there. You'll be first or second. Anyway, all the best, uh, Tony. Hope you do well. Thanks, Bill. I've just managed to get Arthur Hensky from the Capunda Rifle Club. Arthur is one of the old shooters from way back, so I'll just go and enter. Tell me, Artie, how, lo how long have you been rifle shooting? How, how many? How many years? Oh, I started way back in the early 1930s. In the 1930s, early so 1930s. That's, that's more than 50 years. Right. Yeah, and tell me, um, uh, how many years have you been coming up here to the kingship at Handel? Oh, I've been coming to Handel kingship ever since about 19, early 1930s, 32, 33. My word, so you've been coming here almost 50 years too. You, be, you beat me, I'm only 40. You're way, way ahead of me. I won, I won the hand of kingship in 1935. And with what score? Uh, 1930, eh? Uh, what was your score in 1935? My score, 151. 151 out of one, and that was with black powder? Or? 156. Oh, we got a... Volcanic season, as it's correctly known. Didn't get it. Uh, now we're about five minutes to blast off, oh. so if you have just arrived, I'd suggest you get your name down as quickly as possible. Well, they're getting nearly ready to go, uh, Artie, yeah. and I guess you're all set and rare to go. And, and when you took the kingship in 1935, that was with a military-type rifle or black powder? No, 
that was with the uh, Wesley Richards rifle that time. <laughs> and imported ammunition. Oh, I see. My word. Well, it's very interesting. And thank you very much, Artie. I wish you well in the shoot. Oh, I mean, I haven't done much good since. But uh, I've also won the McGill Kingship, McGill Kingship in 1938. Oh, yes, I, I've shot at McGill, but not in competition. Yes, it was a very good range. I like that. On the, on the old uh, ring target range up in Norton Summit Way that time. Yes, 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 I know the range quite well. Yes. Well, I'm still in one piece. But uh, Bob and Charlson will be a range supervisor. Any queries, you'll go to him. One, Ray Hunter on number two. Alan Whitford. On number three, and he's a real mean character, that joker, will be John Hamilton. We're just getting the names off the board. Now, the shooting has uh, commenced, and I'm going to try and home in on some of the exotic rifles we have here today. It's not possible always for me to describe these rifles to you because uh, a number of them are handmade. They uh, use a Rennington uh, or a Sarko or a Ticker Action. But anyway, I'll do the best I can. That's Bob Richards Mousley with a red shirt, I can see there, getting ready to shoot. And the other young fellow here is strapping up. Movie director today. Yeah, I'm movie director today, and Yvonne Hill getting ready. <laughs> Yvonne is very careful and cleans the barrel for every shot. I'll try and get round the corner and pick her up. There we are, that's better now. She's very, very careful, but of course this is what makes a champion, makes the difference between an ordinary shooter and the one that's the top. hear the shots going now so it doesn't need any commentary from me you see, to see what's going on and there's a few 13s going up too there's Anton Werfel immediately in front of us there Anton is a very very well known small war shooter and he just shot a 12 
Behave yourself there, Bruce. I got you on tape. liquid refreshment to back him up a bit before he starts. I used to do that, just have one sit between bull eyes. Here's another bloke. Lining up. Yeah, he's putting on a couple of clicks. Allow for the hot weather, probably. and Bob Richard Mousley still adjusting up. If I hand in on them, we could just about hear what they're saying, I think. Shot is Thank you. 
Got him in, Bill? Oh, yeah. I get him all in. Yeah. Well, things are starting to get pretty warm now. We've got uh, uh, several boys with 77 and 78 coming up. 77 in the first round, that is. C. Staples had 77. Unfortunately, he dropped one point in the second round, uh, but he's going pretty well, and he looks like having a 77 coming up in the second round, which is going to make him a red-hot contender, and my opinion is that he'll win the match. And Barry Kirk got uh, 77 in the first, but I think he's dropped one in the second. Uh, and uh, there are one or two others that are way up with it. Uh, we finished up with, uh, with 61 uh, uh, shooters today, and 61 is not a bad roll-up. Here comes Audrey again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you. <laughs> Somewhere in West Ham, the pattern is starting to emerge. Uh, several of the shooters have finished. Uh, we've got Norm Rule with 77-77. Uh, with three handicap, gives him 157, and he um, looks well on the way to taking out the handicap trophy. Uh, Barry Kirk also has 77-77 with zero handicap. That implies that Barry expected a double possible. And, of course, he got very close to it. That gives him 154, but... Uh, it's just a crying shame that he didn't take himself to handicap, which would have helped things a little. Um, uh, we've got several 76 uh, and 77, but of course they're uh, way out. Uh, although in the final <coughs> analysis, they'll probably come through uh, in, in the nature of third or fourth or thereabouts. Anyway, I'll home in on the uh, scoreboard now and give you a look at it. Neville Jones putting his score up. I might try and get a few words from you. Nev, 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 I wonder if we can get a few words from you now. I'll wait till you come back after you put the rifle back. Okay. Medals, and if I can get a look at them, uh, we'll be able to show you these. No, don't worry, don't worry for a moment, Al. I'll just get the belt of medals first. has an unbeatable lead he's only used a quarter of his handicap he's got uh, 78 in the first round and 77 in the second round I'll zoom in on his uh, targeted frame in a moment here we come now now here we are as you can see uh, C Staples has got 13, 13, all 13s in the first round, and he just dropped one point on his third shot in the second round, finished up with 78, 77, 155, which I think at this stage tops the match. So congratulations, Steve Staples.
Terry Brown. Terry Brown. That'd have to be a ring in. Find his ticket. Two years ago. Right. Now, if you're down with us for a little while. Now, I've just managed to get hold of Albert Hennig, and he's one of our oldest members. And we'll see if we can't get Albert to, uh, to, to uh, say a few words. Albert, how long have you been associated with the club at Handel? Uh, me, since about 1922. 1922, so that's almost 60 years. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how many kingships do you think that you've uh, shot in? Oh, help. Oh, God, I, look, look, I wouldn't have a clue. I, I've never been kept a record. I tell you what, uh, Bill, I've competed certainly at Handel. That's the way I've competed the most times. Yeah. And uh, Lobethal, Tanunda, and they used to have a kingship at Charleston, old yes, Bill Rowe. Yes, yes, back in those I, days I, they I had kingships all over. Once, yes. once I shot there, yeah. But uh, I never ever competed down at McGill. We went down there once for a trophy shoot, you know, just to hand of club against, you know, the Metropolitan. But uh, otherwise, I've never, I've never, never competed in these. Ah yes, I shot at McGill a few times, but not in matches. But it was a, it was a pretty good, uh, a pretty good range. I liked it. Yeah. Well, the funny thing that they, they, they had eleven to, no, we had eleven to put up, and they only had eight. So three, so three of us had to stand out, but we all shot. And I'm blown if I know. I was one of those that was that wasn't selected, and that. And uh, I said, if they'd have selected me. A heart of a club with a one. How about that? Yeah. Well, Albert? Yes. 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 We've got this thing that's cool. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. Now comes the very uh, distressing part for Norm. He's going to be uncrowned or unveiled or undressed or whatever you like to call it. Outside. Before we do that, I think we should give Norm a good hand because after seven, winning seven kingships over a period of years is no small matter. And look at him, he's even got a good beer cup. <laughs> now that's the reason why he lost out today, but he only lost out by one point. That's enough, that's enough. But it's enough. Still, he would have given you a good run for it. No way, no way. Anyway, you're not doing too bad yourself. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> Don't worry about it, fella. Just live and enjoy your history. Seven kingships before we do it. Hibbit! Hooray! Hibbit! Hooray! Hibbit! Hooray! Well, Norm. <laughs> well, Norm, we're 155. We're going to... Right, Norm. Excuse me. There it is. Sandy. Photo. Smile, board. What happened to Jack? There is a way on you, mate. Hey! 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 Hey!
apologize to Barry Kirk with 154 with the Adelaide Gun Shop. <laughs> Barry is one of our club members, a real battler. Goes to Terry Brown with 153, and this is a trophy donated by the Adelaide Gun Shop.
Ladies and gentlemen. How are you, gentlemen? How are you, ladies? Thank you very, very much. This is really kept my day. I can get chicken and beef. Second last week. Third week. Fourth prize, Elf Spalding, with 141. This is all donated by the Hunter Bridal Fund. Fourth prize, Elf Spalding. Third, with, with a score of 602, the team comprising Colin Rule, H. Belson, Dave Taylor, and R. Richard Mountain. <laughs> The Black Powder event. This was donated by Edmund Booker Rex. Was won by Yvonne Hill with 146. Now the self handicap. There's got six people tied for this. <laughs> now this, Dave, uh, Dean, our treasurer, where are you? D. Edmondson, R. Spoolman, D. Hillen, D. Taylor, and Ben Crump. Shoot off! Shoot off then! <laughs> Now we come to the last prize on the list, and this is a consolation prize, as you could say. Uh, it's a bottle of scotch. I couldn't think anything more for a consolation. And this is for the, somebody has to come first and somebody's got to come last. Well, the first man to you. The last man with the last score, he gets a consolation. Dave Hillen. <laughs> Somebody's got to come first, somebody's got to come last. Look, I'd like to say a few words. I won this same event. Uh, <laughs> Put in that business powder next time. The year before last, and uh, I received the last of the leather medals from this club. That's one of my tries, drives me to home, and uh, I think it's part of the tradition of this club, and uh, sorry that it's just come out a couple of years ago, but uh, I'm glad you still got on it. You know that's only filled with coloured water, don't you? <laughs> 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 well, that just about wraps it up for 1980, and I'd like to wish every one of you the very, very best and the happy new year. And I'd like to see you here next year sometime. <laughs> uh, whether I'm around or not is another story. Yeah, I'll get that one to you, don't worry. You want to be here? Yes, yes, yes. I thought I'd better put on Tony Dalitz, who shot the only possible 78 in the second round. So I'll just zoom in on that for you. And there we are. Well, it's all over, and of course, um, now the celebrating's going on, and the, uh, and the boys having refreshments and so forth. Oh, I got 